I don't consider Bitcoin to be a coin at all. Bitcoin is software. Solana software, Polygon software, Avalanche software. These are software projects. And in, in the long run, if you believe that this productivity primarily aimed at financial services, that's what it really is, which is the largest sector globally, um, is going to bring value, then you have to think about crypto as being the 12th sector of the S&P one day, which is the way I look at it. And so my decision as an investor is to get involved now. There's been a lot of advancement in the crypto industry in the last few months, but this doesn't slow down BlackRock to make a large investment in the USDC, which I think is a big signal to the industry. Hello, and welcome to Webster Finance. In today's video, the man that doesn't need any introduction, Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary give his insight into how the market is performing now and his view over the next 6 to 12 months and beyond with this exciting industry that we're all in. Kevin O'Leary also discussed the new regulation coming soon, so we shall be prepared for the new changes. So, without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. Before it becomes regulated, because my long-term belief is that when it does get regulated, and I'm talking primarily about the U.S. market, there's going to be an inflow, a very large inflow of institutional capital into all of these assets. Now, you can't know with certainty who the winners are going to be, and that's why you need a diversified portfolio. So I've got a very large um, selection of different projects in my portfolio, about 32 of them. So different tokens, coins, uh, equities of software companies like WonderFi, like BitBuy, like CoinBerry. And th to me, that's all the infrastructure. I mean, you've got to have compliant platforms if you're ever going to let this be something that the everyday person can use. And so today, in the announcement of the expansion of the number of users in the WonderFi platform, with Coinberry, that's very important because it puts us in a premier position in Canada for customer acquisition, customer service features, and all of the things we can do well as we do it on a compliant basis. And so the way I look at it is you can play two different ways. You can go rogue and that's a lot of fun and you might make money, or you can do it in a compliant way that fits within the banking system, which is what I would prefer because I think longer term, there's more value there. So wonder if I, uh, Coinberry, BitBuy, these are all compliant platforms, regulated, and we operate under an order from the government. So I consider that a much safer way to play ball. And in the long run, a great investment. Let's start with the investment premise. The reason you should own some Bitcoin, in my view, and I'm not telling people what to do, I'm telling what I'm doing, is that I believe at some point, Bitcoin will be regulated. And when that happens, it'll get an allocation in sovereign wealth and pension plans of maybe half a percent to 1%, maybe up to 3%. That would be a traditional mandate. But if you're running a $100 billion mandate, which is a small sovereign fund, um, that's a lot of money. And so I would like to have a position in Bitcoin prior to that happening, because I think that's what's going to give it much more stability and price appreciation over time. No different than gold, digital asset, if you want to look at it that way. And everybody has their own opinion about what their weighting should be on Bitcoin, but that's my opinion. Now, the, the ESG issue, for, for most uh, institutions who are not permitted to buy Bitcoin, the way they got exposure to the value of Bitcoin was to buy the shares of public miners. And there's some great companies out there, Hot8 is one, um, Hive, Marathon, Riot, and many others. Um, and so they're publicly trading and you could just buy a basket of those shares and uh, you would see those stock prices are all, they mirror the price of, of Bitcoin. If this, Bitcoin doubles, the stock price doubles, et cetera. It goes down, they go down. And that was just fine, except all of those miners use carbon offsets to claim carbon neutrality. Now, in the last, last few months, the SEC put out a memo saying that they're going to require carbon audits from all public companies that claim neutrality, including Bitcoin miners and every other company that's public. So if you claim that you're carbon neutral because you're buying offsets, you need an auditor to sign that. Now, everybody knows that carbon offsets are BS for lack of a better word. You know, you're, you, you're doing something that uh, is generating carbon and you buy an acre of the Amazon rainforest and you claim you're carbon neutral. There's no way to audit that and no auditor will sign it. So that was, that's no longer an option for institutions. And I, I sold my shares in all those companies, not because they're not great companies, just that I don't want to be involved in the debate around carbon offset audits. And so the new model that is emerging is sovereign wealth funds investing in hydro and nuclear power data facilities, 
where they mine their coin and they keep it on the balance sheet. I'm a shareholder in a company called BitZero that's private. Its, large sharehold, its largest shareholders are the United Arab Emirates. Um, that's the new model. They call it the Norwegian model. So Bitcoin mining will actually be a good thing because it'll be done with hydroelectricity, wind, solar, and nuclear power. And all of the other sources of electricity will fall out of favor uh, because you can't survive a carbon audit. And that's okay. I mean, look, it's just one of those things that happens. Nobody saw it coming, but Bitcoin will be fine. The attack by the European Union on proof of work three weeks ago, uh, they were trying to ban Bitcoin mining with that, uh, that, that edict. It failed. And because there's a lot of innovation that happens in Bitcoin mining, it's a lot of development of better technologies, better computing power, uh, less use of energy, more development of hydro turbines, all of that's coming. That's all good. And that's why the European Union struck that down. But that shows you the risk here. Even the POTUS order talked about climate change and that was a direct swipe at Bitcoin mining that done the traditional way. So all of that's going to change. And I think that's a good thing. Just a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago at Bitcoin 2022 on the Wednesday, which was institutional day, there was 1,500 institutions participating and they own zero crypto, nothing. Now for them to take the time to fly in from all over the world to listen to speakers uh, talk about this means they're very interested and they anticipate that policy is coming. And I would also argue that th there was a lot of that signal there. For example, Senator Cynthia Lummis, who put forward a 600 page bill was the keynote on the Friday to the, to the Bitcoin 2022 conference. And she talked about how she is pushing for policy on, on crypto. Um, in addition to that, we saw the Toomey and the Haggerty bills that specifically talk about stable coins that's another group of initiatives. So all of this policy is coming all at the same time, which signals to institutions that it's time to start understanding this asset class. But I think what will happen first is if we're going to get policy, it's probably going to be around something very conservative, like a stable coin, like a USDC or another stable coin, which would allow institutions to use it and, and, and stake it or lend it and try and get a four or 5% interest rate on it, which they can't do with cash right now. And as a payment system, it's far superior to anything else out there, much faster, more transparent, um, certainly auditable through the chain. And so a lot of good things happening there. But again, it's all policy and it's all software innovation and it'll come at the, at the pace it comes. But I'm making investments across all of these places. My interest in being a shareholder in Wonderfy was that the management there of which you're a member had a very clear vision of what the strategy was. And I boil it down to two words compliant crypto. I can't afford to be a crypto cowboy. I do not want to work outside of the regulatory regime ever because I have too many assets that are regulated now and a very large portfolio of more traditional financial services companies that are highly regulated. And we do not have the option to be offside. I'm also regulated internally by a compliance department and an external auditor. And it's very clear to me, my path has to be on a compliant basis. But I also think the real long-term value is to provide compliant platforms to this nascent industry. So the reason I'm a, you know, a, an investor in Wonderfy is it was clear to me when they came on the scene, they said two things that really interested me. First, they wanted to be compliant on a decentralized wallet and also on a centralized wallet, which is a great option because if you're going to the trouble of acquiring a customer and paying to acquire that customer, and I've learned as I've explored more and more into crypto that I need both. I need a decentralized wallet where I want to hold my NFTs and I want a centralized wallet for my major coin positions that I can have an account in and monitor it and have a little more security. Even though I don't have direct ownership of that coin, it's okay with me because if I'm going to take big weightings in Bitcoin or Ethereum or Solana, maybe a couple of others, I want that in a centralized wallet. But with Wonderfy, I get both. 